Having spent so long thinking about and working on a game about building, crafting, and automation, it's surprising that I've not been able to really feel like I'm playing my game. So, time to get fixing it. To start, mining. While I enjoy slowly strip mining the entire world out from under my Minecraft bases, it doesn't really work with how I want my game to progress. Instead, I'm opting more for a factorial-like approach of having ore deposits dispersed throughout the world. I'm still debating on if I want these to be infinite or not, so for now, they're just infinite and slow to get by hand. As this game is all about going through errors of technology, we're going to start with a clockwork drill. It's just a couple of gears, planks, and wrought iron ingots, which we'll talk more about those items in a moment. When you place down the drill and interact with it, it'll mine the ore or stone below it. If there's a container above it, it'll put it in automatically. If there's nothing above it, it'll drop it, and if it can't put the item into the block above it, it'll stall the drill preventing it from rotating. Now, to make getting these resources useful. The game already technically has a crafter, which is the furnace. However, trying to melt wood into the shape of a gear sounds like a tough task. I was originally debating on if I wanted the ability for the player to be able to craft, as most games I've seen provide a basic crafting system you can use that is always available. I, however, don't care about that. The main use case of this on-player crafting system is usually just to allow the player to build their first actual crafting bench, and then for some random one-off crafts. So instead, I'm replacing on-player crafting with the construction system. This allows you to select an option to build on a menu, move around a ghost, and then place the structure. It takes the items from your inventory, so it's possible to do things like take multiple items to build something. It addresses the building side of things, but not transforming items from one thing to another. That still needs a crafting system. The basic workbench fills in this gap and is the first crafting station you can make in the game. It costs a couple of oak logs and allows you to craft things like planks, sticks, and gears. It just crafts instantly, as these recipes will be replaced by more efficient and automatable recipes later in the game. This isn't the only crafting station in this video though, so let's move over to the mortar and pestle. It not only has confused me on its spelling for days, but it's also another instant craft crafting station that allows you to turn stone into gravel and gravel into sand for glass. It's also an early test of my new modeling pipeline. Early versions of the model were a bit of a mess, and I think the current lighting system needs some improvements for this to really shine, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What is up? No, I'm not asking how you are, I'm asking what up is. I also need to know where forward and back are. I hadn't quite handled rotations yet in my engine, and it's starting to get on my nerves. Avoiding it wasn't really going anywhere, but I also knew this was going to be a very painful experience having done a simpler version of the system in the past. I thought, oh, it'll be easy, it'll only take an hour or two. Yeah, how'd that turn out? It took like three days since I ended up having all of it backwards and sideways anyways. This was mainly done by large match statements that handled things like rotating textures around a block and finding which face was up. There are eyesores in the code base, but I can't think of how I would actually have calculated all of the conversions without a lot of work I wasn't willing to do. I hope I never have to touch this code again. Since voxels could now be rotated, I could now also properly deal with machine I.O. based on the size of a block. In earlier versions of the engine, the concept of allowing something to be transferred wasn't very complex. The only thing you could do was mark a slot as take only, which only really works for a furnace output. Now, with the clockwork drill in the game, this changes things. If you try to put a furnace on top of a clockwork drill, it would input into either the smelting or fuel slats, no matter which direction you inserted from. In this situation, I would expect that from the bottom we can insert fuel, from the top we can insert smelting items, and the sides we can extract the result. That of course isn't possible if you can only mark a slot as take only. Sidetracking for a moment, we need to talk about voxel events. When loading a voxel, each one can optionally hook into an onevent function. When any of the possible events are provided to a voxel, it is given the choice to accept or cancel an event. These events range from breaking blocks to machine I.O. For some examples, the world floor to be gatherable without breaking, which cancels the break event but still drops an item, grass to grow or die, which is a random tick event, winding up a clockwork drill, which is an interact event, Opening a furnace, again, interact, but also interacting, which allows things like inventory transfers. And importantly, for machine I.O., the insert possible and extract possible events. When either of these two events are triggered, it provides a box with the opportunity to accept or cancel a transfer based on which slot, what items, and which direction the transfer is coming from. With only these values, we're able to do some quite advanced behavior. For the furnace, this means I can restrict the bottom slot to only allow items with a burn value from the bottom of the furnace, the top to only insert into the top slot, and for the output to not be allowed at all. This code makes me unreasonably happy. Like, look at it! It's this easy to restrict a slot to only burnables. Additionally, to allow extraction from all the slots on their corresponding sides, it ends up looking like this. This event system is single-handedly carrying the development of features in the game at this point. It was implemented in between the last video and this one, 
and I'm so happy I replaced a bucket full of event handlers with this monolithic beauty. It can definitely get a bit chunky, but it works fantastically for getting shit done. After all, my goal is a game here. So, with that said, it's time for pipes. Whew! Alright, I'm excited about this one. I've been thinking about item transportation in my game for a while now. I also have an obsession with seeing my items move around and build craft pipes. They're great, but they do have some flaws. For instance, they can't back up, so items just fall out of the pipes if they can't go anywhere. I can fix it. So, pipes, but Factorio style. They can back up, have set transfer speeds, and have built-in splitters and mergers. As I haven't already built something like these before, they were kind of daunting to approach. However, the machine I code was already giving me some ideas about how I could use the same system for pipes. My first idea was to have pipes always have this end segment, and that's where the pipes would transfer whatever items it gets, too. But I came up with something far better. Instead, pipes have three segment modes. Extract, Insert, and Transfer. When a pipe is placed on a block with an inventory, it will be set to Extract. Items it pulls from this inventory are moved to the center of the pipe, where it will try and provide its items to the other five possible segments. When a pipe is placed on another pipe, it will be set to Transfer, and the placed on pipe segment will be converted to Insert. Transfer pipe segments can only get items when something else transfers to them, and Insert segments will take items from Transfer and Extract segments to provide its output items. When a pipe is placed in the front will connect to an inventory, it will be set to insert, and if that inventory was a pipe, that pipe will be set to transfer. And finally, if a block adjacent to a pipe is broken, any connections on that side is broken. These rules are a bit complex and took me a bit to put together, but pipes connect how you'd expect. These finally give you a way to start automating in the game and will, of course, be getting upgraded versions later in progression. It is really fun to watch the items go around. By the way, if you like what you see, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support me in making more videos like this, consider becoming a YouTube or Patreon member. You get early access to these videos and your name at the end of the video. It's been lovely working on the project. I actually got to playtest the game with my roommate, and she ended up playing for a few hours. The game was unbalanced and a mess, but I finally got to see the real start of this game. Adding more and different ways to craft is definitely something I look forward to doing more of in the future, and I'd love to start pushing the game towards the Steam Age, Steampunk-esque era. It'll take time to get there, but it should be worth it. I'm hoping to try and make these progress updates more frequent than every few months in the future. I originally thought about trying to do weekly, but that's just too short. I'm aiming for a few weeks between future updates, but I'm making no promises on a schedule. Game dev is hard. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.